Mary, it's been some time since I wrote you last. Papers, scares. Billy Gentry discovered the body of his brother Davey about a week before he lost his leg. And Davey joined up with the Yankees, as you know, and I was beside him when he found the body. I heard Billy took two bullets to his knee, but continued shooting for more than an hour before they was able to carry him off. He'll be returning home soon. The day after battle is always worse than the battle itself. The horrified faces of the dead, mutilated bodies, some of the injured but still alive are beyond my ability to describe. Our scouts reported they'd seen Yankees burn some of our boys alive. Oh, a great sin if we committed to find ourselves in this hell. The night before last, I dreamed of being home with you, sleeping under a peach tree loaded with fruit. The men of my regiment call a dream a home, a soldier's joy. They say this war will last for years. As for me, I had enough. But we'll continue to fight till the last minute. But no, when I do return home, I'll never leave your side again. I love you and I, I miss you. Your loving husband, Porter Jenkins. Porter. I hope this letter finds you in good health. I, however, am shaken and furious. I would be fighting by your side if they would let me. Union troops came through here yesterday. The most despicable excuses for human beings I have ever seen. I thought they were going to burn the house down. They took every chicken, our hog, both horses, and my grandmother's silver set. I'm glad there are men like you to put a stop to these scoundrels. I hope you can read this. My hands are still shaking. I love you, Mary. My dearest man, I've been promoted and will be sending more money home soon. As I said before, I want to marry you. All I ever wanted was to have a house full of kids and grow old with you. When I'm sick and chilled to the bone, I think of asking for a discharge, but then think of my childhood friend Rastus and the time Silas Morgan flogged him for dropping a basket of eggs. A man cannot own a man. Rastus is more of a man than Silas could ever hope to be. If I do die in battle, know that as the last breath leaves my lips, I will whisper your name. Please forgive me for how thoughtless and foolish I've been, for the many times I've hurt you by my ignorance. I wish I could wash away every stain on your happiness with the tears I fight back today. And know that if it is possible for the dead to come back to this earth and be around those they love, I will be beside you through your happiest days and your darkest nights. If you feel a soft breeze on your cheek on a hot summer day, know that it is my spirit trying to caress you. Do not mourn me as gone, but think of me as waiting for you on the other side of this life. I think often of Fremont making the point that one man in four is living under slavery in the South. I imagine the future where all jobs are tended by slaves and the profits goes only to the small number of men who own them. What will become of the rest of us in a world like that? Cody Kincaid. Cody, it's been so long since I heard from you last. I like to believe that our letters are just not making their journey through this crazy time that we live in. And I pray that you're still alive. I moved in with my sister Kate, and I sold the farm to Johnny Dalton. I'm not sure if my other letters made it to you or not, so I'll tell you again. Your son died at birth. We had a beautiful baby boy. Dr. Campbell did all he could, and he cried like a baby himself because he couldn't save him just couldn't catch his breath. Abel is doing fine at Fargo Freight and says to tell you he can get you a job there when you return. Just please return, Cody. 
I pray for you day and night, and I can't describe the feeling of incompleteness I get when I look out that window. Always yours, Nellie. Search him and take him back to camp. We ain't got time for no prisoners. I'll shoot that damn Yankee right now.